Hello YouTube, it is I, Banded Wendy. How are you? It is Saturday the 25th of February 2012. Random video. I don't know yet what it will be titled. Um, but my mind is churning and this video is brewing inside of me. So I want to make it. And maybe it will be a series of videos. Um, I don't know where this one's going to go. Uh, but I want to talk about the big umbrella that is above us in this journey. I'm almost three years post-op, lap band. Um, so I have a different perspective on it than I did three years ago. Uh, and a different one than I had two years ago and a different one than I had a year ago, right? It's an evolution process. No doubt it's an evolution process. In the beginning, when I started the journey, I was obese. You know, BMI of 35, 244.6 pounds. Um, I was 35 years old uh, and had struggled with my weight. You know, I can remember being, um, oh, probably 14, going on my first diet that I put myself on. Um, and then I continued over, you know, the course of, let's just say, 20 years of gaining and losing the same 60 to 100 pounds. Um, did Weight Watchers and uh, other diets. You've seen me with my books, The Old Lady Down the Street. Um, and was successful with them, with losing weight. But I could never maintain the weight. So, you know, fortunately enough, I met a great guy uh, who educated me about weight loss surgery and at my final breaking point, which I think that's where you have to be in order to commit to the change, the transformation, the becoming of a new you, your new normal lifestyle. Um, you have to be rock bottom and digging at the bottom of the barrel to go lower uh, in order to be successful and change your life because that is the umbrella. This is what we're doing, right? With weight loss surgery, you have a BMI, and that's how you qualify uh, to get weight loss surgery um, because you're obese, you weigh too much, and maybe you have sleep apnea, diabetes, high blood pressure, the list goes on. Um, and you can pick all kinds of different surgeries, lap band, plication, gastric bypass, mini gastric bypass, VSG, um, some people even get band over bypass because the bypass failed them. Some people revision from lap band to VSG because the lap band failed them. On and on and on and on. They go from lap band to gastric bypass because the lap band failed them. You know, it just... The truth of the matter is there are certain situations for sure medically where one weight loss surgery fails and maybe another one is better. But in the beginning it's about, you just wanna lose weight. You wanna lose weight because you wanna shop like me and feel better about getting dressed every day or because you have children and you've been told that you know, you're gonna die real quick if you don't do something about your high blood pressure or your diabetes or whatever those comorbidities are that are killing you, right? So it's a life or death type of thing, health issue. Um, and you want the scale to go down. And you either get this big old binder, you know, with all the ways to be successful on your weight loss surgery journey, or you get two sheets of paper, like I did, that list the rules and what to eat and what not to eat and uh, send you on your way. And then you flail, you know, you, you have surgery and there's, it's a traumatic experience on the body, and you can't eat very much. You can only sip. You're on a liquid diet. Then you go into purees, and, you know, then you come into the real world, right? Um, and if you're not single uh, or living with a weight loss surgery person, uh, then you're living in a world of food and crazy situations. Crazy to me now, because I don't live in those situations. Um, and uh, people struggle. People struggle. So, you know, 
one of the things that um, one of the things that I think is completely missing from our YouTube community uh, and also I think in the world of weight loss surgery patients is nutrition education, uh, dietitian education, uh, food labeling education, uh, making a right choice when it comes to what foods to put in the body, um, understanding the size of our, our, our stomas or our pouches or our stomachs um, because after a certain period of time the weight loss surgery trauma of that being you know a, a certain type of restriction or swelling or fear even people don't go to eat certain things because they're fearful of them and so they stay away from them and well, one of my favorite YouTubers said she fought, you know, gastric bypass when she ate the cookie. Now she wishes she wouldn't have eaten that first cookie because she didn't dump, right? So you kind of test the waters. I'm not a dietitian. I have no formal training in how to eat or what to eat. Um, so sometimes I don't feel confident enough or educated enough to share my true, you know, opinions about these type of things because I'm just some... OFG, original fat girl, uh, that has uh, changed her life. Changed my life. Crazy. And it's not easy, you know. It's easier today than it was six months ago or two years ago or three years ago because I've lived the change. I've lived the change. I've lived through the struggles. I still live through the struggles. So... Again, this is why this is already seven minutes. This is why this is a series of videos. I ask you all to just step back for a second and stop focusing on, I just got to lose the weight. I just got to lose the weight. I lost two pounds this week. I lost four pounds this week. I gained six pounds this week. I didn't lose anything. I maintained this week. I got to get to a normal BMI. I got to get to my goal weight. I get it. You know, there's 400 and some odd videos backtrack of me doing that. That's our truth to a certain degree, and it matters. But that all comes from, in my life lesson opinion, doing the work to change my life, to transform the way I think about food. You know, you think about it, uh... Mm, most of us weren't exercising 30 minutes a day, 7 days a week, getting in 210 minutes of exercise, however you slice it, uh, before weight loss surgery. So when you start some type of exercise program, whether it's walking with your walking buddies, uh, doing the elliptical, swimming, Zumba, running, uh, skiing, whatever fitness thing you get into, uh, you, get, you, you get hooked on it. You realize, wow, this feels good. I like it. And I'm not necessarily at my best unless I get that in, right? So it becomes something that you weren't doing before that you learned to, you grow to like, you grow to enjoy, you grow to want to do it, right? But food is what made us obese, really. And often emotions about everything going on got connected to food. So, we didn't get obese because we were following rules. We didn't get obese because we knew what and how to fuel our bodies. We got obese from putting food in our mouth anytime we wanted, whatever we wanted, no matter what it was. Um, and going on crash diets, some of us, and losing some weight, maybe a bunch of weight, and eventually regaining it because it wasn't sustainable for us. Because we were on a diet. Right? We didn't go into a diet with, I'm going to change my life. We went into a diet with, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, or 50, or 100, or 10, whatever. 
Um, and, you know, I have the opportunity to talk to a lot of people and meet a lot of people and watch a lot of your videos. I'm subscribed to over a thousand of you. Uh, and hear what's going on and see what's going on and get into people's minds when I'm given the opportunity. And at 10 minutes, I'm going to stop this video and just ask you to think about all the things you're doing. Water, food, exercise, vitamins, portion control. Remember, four to six ounces of food is what your stoma or your pouch holds, right? What is four to six ounces? That digital food scale, you need one. You really need a scale. Um, and I'm talking, I'll talk strictly about the lap band. Strictly for a lap band patient. Uh, so those things, those rules, those components of the rules, those are what are hard to learn how to live. You know, I, I talk to people who, you know, three years out, I still haven't been able to not eat with my meals or not drink with my meals. Well, if that's working for you, great. Good for you. But if it's not working and you're not losing or you're regaining or you're not doing what you want to do, it's a rule, people. You know, try it. It's hard. I struggled with it. I struggled so hard with it. I still have to leave the clock. But I can do it. You know, I've ate meals with people who, you know, Eight months later, say, I know, I watch you when we eat. You don't drink. It's a rule, you know? So follow those things. Utilize them and realize that you're not doing them to lose weight, to lose your BMI, to hit a goal. Mm -mm. You're doing all those things to change your life, to become a new you to set a standard for your new normal. And eventually they're not rules, they're a lifestyle. Um, I wanna come back and, and talk about uh, how do you pick protein and more about that portion control and why calories and protein are so important uh, on the journey. I don't know when I'll come back to talk about that, but uh, all that is stemming from me uh, and why I needed to, to make this video and why I want to have this conversation. Uh, it's about transforming your life. The big umbrella uh, uh, over top of a weight loss surgery journey is we weren't happy with our old life, thus we've had weight loss surgery. The result should be mentally that we are transforming who we are, the caterpillar into the butterfly, right? It won't be easy, there will be challenges, but you can get through them and you can transform your life. You can. So, happy Saturday. Thank you. <laughs>